I was in the studio and I was like, okay, you know, we're working with Big Girl God and I'm excited. And I'm expect I'm expecting black men to come in. So when they come in, it's two white guys and then a, like a black kid. He looked young though. So I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I shake the, their hand. <laughs> and then the little black kid they wear, I'm like, hey! And I give him a hug and I'm like excited. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Because I think he's Big Girl Got it. <laughs> so I turned to Joel and I'm like, are you his lawyer or manager? He goes, no, we're being grow got it. I said, R <laughs> I said, you nobody you, gave you the heads up. Nobody <laughs> gave me a heads up. I said, excuse me, <laughs> you're big grow got it. Two white guys, two middle -aged? like what? So I, it threw me off. It threw me for a loop. Okay, but I was like, all right, we lit then. I said, so who the hell is this guy? <laughs> You nervous? Nah, I'm just playing. Nah, you're never nervous. <laughs> I don't believe that. Maya the Dawn is here. We're talking about her new mixtape, Hot Commodity. She was just trying to pretend like she was nervous before the cameras start rolling. I what? don't know. Uh, maybe I am. Maybe you make me nervous. No, that's There's funny. no way, bro. I've seen you on the internet. I met you <laughs> once briefly. Nothing about you gives Everybody me shy or nervous. Says that. I mean, is it not true? I don't know. I think I'd be nervous sometimes. Well, if you do, you hide it well. You're just so warm and charismatic. It's hard Thank to not you. feel just good around you. So <laughs> I don't want to give you any nervous energy. That's not the kind of energy you deserve, especially you. after dropping this really, really dope project. Thank you. What's your favorite song? I want to know that. All right. So hold on. I have my list here because I'm bad at remembering titles right away. But mm -hmm. Call Me If You're Down is a bop. Hello My Name Is is probably my favorite, but I feel like we'll get to that later. Uh -huh. So some artists have big records and they're fun to listen to because the production's over the top or the hook is good or whatever reason. But with you and I'm being honest, I just genuinely like listening to you. You just <laughs> rap well, like on every different Thank beat you. or vibe you have on the project. You just flow with it and you own it. And I think a lot of people don't have that kind of presence. Thank you so much. I work really hard on that. I try to force myself to be in different pockets and like walk into different worlds and work with different people. Like every song is produced by a different person because I really wanted to, you know, have different energy, a song for everyone and just, you know, make music that made me feel good. And like the things that I like, I love pop music. So I was like, I have to do something <laughs> pop. Like that's like my guilty pleasure is like pop music. Did you grow up listening to pop music? Yes. I wanted to be a pop star. When I was younger and I was writing music, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be Hannah Montana. Oh, Hannah Montana. Specifically. <laughs> but then I was a very self-aware kid, so mm -hmm. I realized really early that I couldn't sing. So I was like, all right, that's not in the cards for you. <laughs> Yo, I mean, you could consider some vocal lessons, like you never know. You know, I actually do want vocal lessons, but I want to do vocal lessons just so I can learn how to use my voice more and do things and like breath control and so I can rap better, but not so I can sing. Because I know it's just, I hate when people who can't sing try to sing. Yeah, It's like, girl, that's not for you. Stop. <laughs> so I don't want to be that person. I know I can't sing and that's all right because I rap well. Yeah, people are <laughs> listening because you rap very well. So it's all good that you can't sing. And you know what's funny? So you started off as a beauty influencer on TikTok. Yes. And it seems like you didn't actually, maybe necessarily you didn't think you had what it took to be a rapper. So tell me about what really got you into being a beauty influencer in the first place? Well, I was a makeup artist, and during the pandemic, wasn't nobody getting makeup done. So I was like, damn, I need to, like, get some more clients. I need to make some money, or I'm not going to be able to pay for school. Um, books is expensive, okay? Even just to rent them is expensive. And I was like, all right, I got to make something shake. So I really was just posting, like, clients at first, um, posting my own makeup, like, sales, stuff like that. And, you know, I started to get a lot of attention quickly. And then it was just becoming too much because I learned very quickly. Like, all these bookings I was getting, I was like, I don't like working for people or, like, I don't like customer service work, like, where I have to do something for the other person and I have to make sure I'm always nice. And, nope, I don't like that. Girl, fuck you. I want to be able to say, girl, fuck you when I want to say, girl, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And so it was a lot. Like, I was getting, like, wedding clients and then they'd be like, girl, I want to look like Kim Kardashian. Yo, wedding but clients are the wanna... worst clients, I feel like, when you're a the makeup weddings? artist. I've, I've been married. I'm just saying... 
Yeah. Maybe I was one of those clients. I don't know. I, listen, the weddings be the worst because they be like, I had a client who was like, I want to look like Kim Kardashian, but I still want to look natural. I still want my husband to recognize me, but I just need to be snatched and I want to. I was like, like well, okay, girl, so you don't look shit like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> you so want me to do that now today? Make you, yeah, I can't make you look like Kim K and yourself. The two can't exist at the same time. So customer so, service was not it for you. Yeah, it wasn't it for me. So I was like, I don't want to do this no more. But I started so, making so much money from like brand deals and, you know, just doing my own makeup. So I I was like, I ain't doing this no more. Like, so I got my new clients, and in like three months, I was like, you're done. Like, I can't do this no more. And so I was like, okay, I gotta get on my Zoom so that I can, you know, make this money. And I gotta, you know, market myself so that the brands is gonna wanna fuck with me. So that's what I did. I started transitioning from being a working MUA to just focusing on building my my um, the brand versus as like a person versus like my business as a makeup artist. Wow, so the pandemic actually, like, <laughs> helps you. It was pushing you in the right direction. Yes. Yeah, there's there's a lot of jams on here, and just going back to, like, being amazed at how you flow over every record. So is around the time, I think, maybe you dropped Chirac? Mm -hmm. Really, is that when you started to take rap seriously? Like, what was that transition? Had you been rapping before, but just for yourself? No, not really. I used to write music all the time. And then I did the Shy Rack Freestyle. It's like a little joke. I had hit like, I think it was like 100K or something like that. Um, and I just did it as a joke. Like, I love I love music. I love that song. That was like my favorite song ever. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to just do it for fun, whatever. And people really liked it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to just keep posting about it, whatever. And then I didn't do anything for a really long time because it was just jokes but the studio that I recorded that at um my manager he owned the studio and so he was like when I before I had did it he was like yo you should be a rapper and I was like well shut up shut up and he was like um no you should I like your voice or something I don't know and I was like yeah whatever whatever and then I went back to Chirac for it. I remember I, um, I had asked my friend for his information. I was like, can I use your studio? Da, 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 da. It's expensive. This and that. He was like, yeah, whatever. You could come. And so I did it. He was like, maybe you shouldn't be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He was like, maybe you shouldn't be a rapper. But this is not good. And I was like, um. It was really that bad? It, I don't But it I sounds like you song. probably, did you, I mean, did you go into that session prepared? Or did you no. go and completely freestyle it? Yeah, that's what that was. That's like, brave. Just, hey, it was just for fun. Yeah. And he was like, nah, you're not good. Like, I was bugging. And I was like, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I could do it. And so it became like uh, I wanted to prove to him that I knew how to be a rapper because I used to write music. And I was like, I know how to rap. Like, I, I got stuff written in his gut. And he just was telling me it was so trash. So everything I was doing, he was like, this is terrible. And then it came to a point where, like, I was already feeling really stagnant in my career as an MUA and, you know, doing social media. It's, it just wasn't for me. I don't like that. Like, I feel like when you on, you have, like, a a personality on social media, people feel, like, entitled to your, your business. And I don't like that because I'm a very private person. So it got to a point where I was like, Mm -mm. Like, I need to take a step back and figure something else out. Then, you know, make money elsewhere because this is not cool. And I like that. And so I was like, music. Like, this could be a good, you know what I'm saying? I put everything in the music. So we started taking it serious at this yeah. point. Yeah, and because I was already feeling stagnant in my beauty career, I was looking for something that made me feel good and, like, fulfilled me because it was like I felt like I was living the same um, day, every day. Like, wake up, do content, do homework go to sleep, do it again. And it was just so unfulfilling and I wasn't happy. And the only time that I was happy was when I was writing the music or going to the studio. And so I was just like spending a lot of time doing that. And he like went to LA and I was like, I couldn't use the studio because, you know, I couldn't use the studio. But I was like, all right, I'm gonna still go to the studio. And like, you know, I was spending $90 an hour at studios, taking the train to go to the Bronx. And, you know, be in the studio because I loved it and it made Damn, me feel good. Damn, you're commuting good. all the way from Brooklyn to the Bronx and paying $90 an hour. Yes, that might not girl. sound like a lot if you're not from New York City. No, listen. That's a lot of money and a lot of time. That's <laughs> yes. a crazy... Bro, you got to pay me to, like, go yeah. all the way from Brooklyn to the Bronx. Anyway, continue. Exactly. But I was fighting. And so I was like, okay. I, sometimes I would be going from school. And I went to school in New Paltz. 
So I was coming far, like taking the Metro North, then I had to take two trains to get to the Bronx. It was a lot. and But it made me feel good. And it was starting to get like expensive. And I'm like, listen, I need this, that, that, I need beats. And I, I was, he wouldn't answer the phone because he working in LA somewhere with the next person. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody give me like, help me. And I think it was to a point where I was just like, listen, I'm going to do this with or without you because it makes me happy. And I believed in myself. And he was telling me everything was whack anyway. But but I just was this just to him, him playing mind games with you, by the way? I don't know. Like, did he I really think... not believe that, but he thought it was gonna? Push no, he you? thought it was bad. Okay, he, right. he genuinely <laughs> thought it was bad. But when I, I was the, the more I did it, yeah. he was like, okay, this is better. Mm -hmm. But you still off beat. Well, he be he would be like, why are you rapping in full sentences? And I'd be like, fuck you. And then I would send him stuff, and he'd be like, you sound like Jada Kiss. I'd be like, I want to sound like Jada Kiss. <laughs> Yo, this is these are some of the best notes I've ever heard. I'm like, okay, cool. He gonna record me the next day that I wrote the song, went in the studio. Telfy was the last song I recorded, and I remember I sent E everything. And he was taking dumb long to, um, to respond. And I was about to get on the train. My phone was going to die. I was like, can you respond to me, like, right now, please? Like, please, I'm fighting. And he was like, oh, you got to give me a second. Da, da, da. I'm like, ah, whatever. So my phone died. Whatever. I get home, finally plug my phone up. And the first thing I see is a message of him replying to the song. And he, I called it the Dawn song instead of the Thong song because I didn't have a name for it. So he was like, um, this is, like, the best thing you've ever did. I was like, what? A compliment, finally. I was like, finally! He was like, no, this is really good. And I was like, yes! And then that weekend, he flew back to New York. And then I did the video. And, like, two days, it was, like, crazy. Literally. Wow, just like that. Yeah, just like that. Like, he, he was like, nah, this is it. He came back to New York. Because I think then, once I started sending him everything, like, every day, I was sending him stuff. And he was like, okay, she's serious And this about was all it. in 2022? Yes. Because that's when This was job. all last year. So you're telling me you went from him hating everything you recorded yes. from to like, you guys getting Telfy, this being a hit, yes. and now it's a hot commodity. And you sound like this? Yes. This all happened in a I year. I was writing every single day. Wow. Every day I was writing a full song, a verse, like every day waking up, writing. Like, the you, you know what you're supposed to do? I learned this from J. Cole. You're supposed to wake up. First thing you do before you do anything is write. For like 10 minutes. Just write whatever your thoughts. It don't got to rhyme. It don't got to make sense. Just write. Because it trains your brain to think of stuff. You know? Now, now you fast. And you, you know? You exercising your mind. So I was writing every single day. Like nonstop. Sometimes I'm writing multiple songs. Sometimes I'm just writing a verse. Sometimes I'm writing two lines. You know? But I'm writing. And it just... I think that's what made me better. And I was genuinely enjoying it. And so I would go to the studio. I would listen to music forward and backwards. Like... Why is this a good album? What makes this a good album? Like, who produced what? Who wrote what? Like, how did this come to be? I was watching interviews. Like, I'm, I was really a student. Like, I was, I have notes of, like, what, why is this my favorite? Like, I just, I was really into it. I was serious about it. Because I'm, like, a nerd. Yeah. Like, a geeky, like, person when it comes to stuff like that. So, I was like, if I'm going to do this, I need to, like, really immerse myself into it and really understand, like, you know, how to do this and what makes a good rapper and like, you know, how can I get better? I'm not going to lie. My mind is blown that you managed <laughs> to do all of that. No, in a year. Yeah. That, that's I think that's he incredible. wasn't going to work with me if I didn't. Yeah. I thought he would not answer me. He was in L.A. working with everybody. OK, because he's good at his job. And I was like, listen, I need help. And if I need him to help me. And if I want him to help me, I got to show him I'm serious. But that's dope. I mean, he pushed you and you already learned one of like the biggest lessons. I think especially working in this industry, there's a lot of talented people, mm -hmm. people, artists, people behind the scenes. But unfortunately, like putting in those reps, like you yeah. said, that Cole taught you, like that's the most important thing. They say if you want to be a writer, you got to write every day. You can't mm -hmm. just be talking about it. So you already learned an important lesson. So then once Telfy took off, how did you start to feel and see yourself? Oh, it was a lot. And that's actually why I named the mixtape Hot Commodity, because it went from, all right, so Telfy dropped. Before it dropped, I was getting phone calls, messages, like emails. I was overwhelmed. And that's when, you know, I was like, can you please, like, you going to be my manager? I need your help. I need you to help me navigate all of this. I can't do this. Like, I'm going to just be making dumb decisions. So that's what, you know, he started doing. We started taking label meetings. I'm like declining people. I'm feeling like that girl. People want to talk to me. And it's like, 
everybody calling my phone, you know, like now people want to collab and like people who didn't like producers who didn't want to give me the time of day. Like now they want to, you know, send me packs and stuff. And I was like, oh, like I'm just that girl. Like literally the day after Telfy dropped next day, I'm in a studio with five of y'all. I bum rushed him actually. Like I told that story before. Like I just was working with somebody. He was like, yeah, I'm going to go to the studio with five. And I was like, let me go. I want to go. Where you at? And like, that's like, I was just doing shit because I wanted to be a rapper. It's like, you got to take those shots. That's exactly. another thing. This I was like, the worst thing he could do is tell me no. Exactly. Like, yeah, you, you always got to take those shots when they come. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm doing all of this. Like, um, the, also, I was also in the studio with um, Shawnee. The day after I, a selfie drop, I made Love You Better. Um, so I was just doing stuff and I named it Hot Commodity because I was feeling like that, like a hot commodity. But you see, like, all size, all aspects, and like it's almost like expensive. Where I'm like, oh, I did this. I just flew here, and I just bought this, and I got so much money to die. But you also have like the side where it's like mentally and physically draining. What hello, my name is, and how like how it's, it's sometimes it sucks to be a hot commodity. Because, I mean, I like, hear that even you saying yeah. that you feel like you couldn't necessarily talk to your friends about this so when exactly. labels were hitting you you felt like you had to be quiet which is always a terrible feeling when no, you that, can't and that was real too I remember yeah. I told um, some of my friends I said I'm gonna be a rapper and they laughed at me they was like girl bye girl bye uh uh like pff, okay yeah right like you can't rap like this is uh uh they wouldn't post my music when I dropped it I was like um, I was just like alright Cool. Are you still friends with those people now? Some of them, no. My best friend was like, girl, bye. Because, but she says this because I say a lot. I be talking shit. I be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And she be like, yeah, whatever. Shut up. So when I was like, I'm going to be a rapper. She was like, can you just like... Great. What are you going to be tomorrow? Talking? Yeah, literally. <laughs> so she was like, uh-uh. But I think after um, I was like sending her stuff, like really consistently, like I'm in the studio right now. I can't talk. She was like, so you for real? Like you really going to be a rapper, girl? Like you stressing me out. But everybody else I'm not friends with no more because it's like, well, friends about what? Like, you know? Yeah. Friends for what? It's no bad blood, but. You I grow just, apart from people. Yeah. You know, it's you like, know I believed in myself and you didn't and you didn't want to help me, you didn't want to support me. I had friends that I wanted to be in the music videos, they wouldn't do it. So, I, like, the girls who pull up in Telfy, girls I never knew, they just was like followers of mine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, I'm having a video shoot. Who want to be in it? And they pulled up, and now those those are my girls. Talk to them all the time. Every party I'm, I have, they there. Any video shoot I have, they there. Like those are my girls. I, they really helped change my life. So those are my girls. So like shout out Asia, all of them, Aaliyah, everybody. <laughs> Yo, there, so, so many changes in the past yeah. year and a half, but a lot of positive changes, right? And so mm -hmm. you get to this point now, you're a hot commodity, you have all this attention. I'm assuming you do not need to take the train all the way from Brooklyn to the Bronx <laughs> anymore. No, I hate to taking hit the, train. the studio. So, like, tell me then how, because I, we're going to get into it more. We get a little bit more of your personal life mm -hmm. on it. But so at this point, you're fully invested in the music. And yes. are you now just planning your next steps? Yeah. So, okay. So w at what point? Now? After Telfy, Telfy's yes. going up already. So after Everyone's Telfy's calling. Drop, I saw, I have literally recorded every single day from the moment leading up to Telfy dropping to like now. I've had my friend Q, shout out to Q. That's one of my really good friends. He's an amazing videographer and photographer. And he was just hitting a roll everywhere we was going, everything we was doing, he got it on camera. So like literally after Telfy drop, boom, I'm having meetings. I'm in the studio consistently. I'm flying back and forth to LA. Literally I was in LA from after Telfy dropped, it was immediately into like the end of the fourth quarter. So like everything was shut down. But like January 1st, I woke up. And just didn't stop moving. Literally, it was crazy. Like, crazy. I was in L.A., and then I had to go here, and then I had to go there, and then I was here. And just every day moving, and I'm just completely invested. Like, like oh, I got to perform. Oh, I got club bookings. Oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. So it would be like... The work ethic is crazy. I think some people could get a big record, and they start getting some money and some recognition, and that's the time to, like, relax and coast. I'm a very dangerous person because I become obsessive over um like things that I'm interested in I think I'm I'm very very like a, a, like I have an addictive personality mm -hmm. that's why I can't do drugs I don't do drugs <laughs> I can't do it because I know I'll be a crackhead very quickly I have a very obsessive and addictive personality so once I like something mm -hmm. you're done so I love making music I love being in the studio you can't take that away from me 
Like, I'm going to be in there every day. I'm going to find a way to get in a studio. When I fly to somewhere to, to go work, best believe I'm finding a studio to, to, to record in that same night. Who's the hottest producer in, in St. Louis, in Missouri, Milwaukee, wherever I'm at, I don't care who who's there, what, what we got. I want to work. I want to do something. So I think with that, Plus, I'm hungry for it. I have no other option. That digital footprint is a motherfucker. And I can't get into a, to a doctorate program, all right? I was in school to be a psychologist. I can't go get my doctorate no more. You were studying to be a psychologist? I'm still in school. <laughs> I'm still in yeah. school. <laughs> yes, it's, I got two and a half credits left, all right? When are you going to finish those credits? I'm fighting, all right? I'm still true. <laughs> I'm trying. I be emailing my professors every other week, like, please, can I have an Do extension? Do you send them the videos? Like, I swear, I'm they busy. They don't care. Yo, check out the tour schedule. The they tour is care. coming up. They don't care. They don't know you're going on tour with Flo and Millie? They don't care. They said, who's Who are Flo these? Millie? Should we talk to them? Is she in school? This new pulse? Yes. New Paltz is supposed to be super progressive. Y'all love the arts. What's uh-uh. good with They don't care. Man, don't, don't worry about care. them. You got other things but, to do. Right. <laughs> but listen, I said I'm gonna take a gap year or something because I can't do this at the same time. But you deserve that. But all of the hard work you put in, I really <laughs> truly hear it in the music. That's why it's such a good project to listen to. And you mentioned that you grew up loving pop, right? So mm-hmm. let me let me pull up my my handy like track list right here. <laughs> so like, you know, we open with songs like <clears throat> Hella Scary and Expensive. You mentioned Love You with Shawnee Bin Laden. And then, you know, once we get to In Your Hands with Ty Dolla Signs, more slow down joint. Oh my gosh. I love that song. You know how I got that song? How? So the last time we did the interview, I seen him at the Apple Music event. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, there go Ty Dolla Sign. He was talking to somebody for dumb long and I was just standing there waiting. So I was like, when he started to walk, I said, excuse me, I want to get his attention. And he turned around, he just put his arm around me and just faced a camera because he thought I wanted a picture. He's like, oh yeah, let's do it. I was like, I don't want a picture. I want a feature. What's up? And he just looked at me. And I was like, looking at him. It was like the, you know the meme with Diddy and then the other guy from the show where he's like, <laughs> and we were just looking at each other like that. Because I was like, I don't want a picture. I want a feature. What are we doing? And he was like, all right. And I was like, all right, I'm going to send who, who you with. He said, I think it was his assistant or his manager. And I was like, listen, this is the song. I pulled it up on my phone. And I'm like, this is the song. This what's it. I'm like, I want him on this song. I want him to sing his little, <laughs> I want him to do that. And that's all I need from him. All right? And he was like, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Then we're going to talk. I said, no. I, I, you know when they're I trying to give you the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to give me a runaround. Yeah. So when Todd was in the interview, I was sitting there talking to his um his manager, like, for dumb long. The whole time he was in there, I was talking to him. Like, yeah, this is, my name is Maya. I just started rapping. This song is fire. And if you don't do it, you stupid. All right? I said, listen, this is going to be a big record. And I only wanted Ty Dolla Sign on it. Everybody had everybody else to say about who should be wanted. They wanted this person. This. I said, Ty Dolla Sign. All right? This is the one. This is who I want. And I'm not going to stop bothering you if you don't give it to me. His manager really like the song. So I said, okay. This is the song. This is my number. You going to take it? That's our third. My manager talked to him some more. And I was just staring at him like this. The rest of the time, as I finished talking to him, and I was just like, I hope you know I'm serious. Yo, girl, can so you teach me how to shoot my shots? So just for some context, you have to, because this was at our Black Music Month celebration yes. in L.A. It's a lot going on. It's chaotic. Artists in and out of studio. Their mm-hmm. teams, our teams, chaos. Mm-hmm. So for you to lock down side dollar Listen, sign in that chaos. he wasn't going nowhere without me, all right? I said, let, hello! <laughs> hello! <laughs> I'm loud and I'm, you know, I'm going to jump up and down. It's going to be hard for you to ignore me, okay? I don't care. I said, I want this song. The song is going to be for my mixtape. I need you on my mixtape, Mr. Ty Dolla Sign, all right? And you made that happen. Yeah, listen, it took forever because I ain't hearing nothing for a long time. There's a video of me reacting to it in the studio, like, maybe like three, four weeks before I drop High Commodity. I'm just sitting in the studio because I'm supposed to record another verse. I don't know if I can mention it's my body. Anyway, <laughs> um, I was recording another verse. I'm just standing away for the engineer, da, 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 and then it plays, and I was like, "We got it, bitches!" I was like, "We got it, bitches!" I was so excited because it took a long time. I said, "He don't want to do my song," and I was like, right, "He don't have to do like my I song." Like I sat there, talked to manager's uh, ear. I was like, "His funky ass don't want to do my song." I, I guess I got waiting time hard enough, and then he said, and I was like. Thank you, Todd Alisson. I DM'd him and I was like, I love you. Thank you. And yeah. Yo, shout out to Ty Dolla Sign. Shout man. out to Ty Dolla What a good Dolla dude. Sign. One of the hardest working dudes around. Maya, I I, I'm just not brave like you. In situations like that, I just like shrink and no shrivel. Mommy, like, you know what? Ball. It's amazing. When you wait for people to give you opportunities mm-hmm. or you wait for people to just do things because they want to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to hand you this. You're right. All right. 
That's what they're gonna do. Just you so can't bad. wait for nobody to hand you nothing because right. they're just gonna hand you this. So I, <laughs> where did you learn this from? You've I don't always know, I been like always, this. I've always been like that because I used to be bullied and um, I was picked on. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna always defend myself. I'm gonna always just say what I want because the moment I started doing that is when people left me alone, hmm. and I like to be left alone. All right. So I was like, listen, just you just gotta start talking. You just gotta. <laughs> Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth, dummy. And so that's why I tell myself, sometimes it get me in trouble because I don't think before I speak and sometimes I just react too quickly because I'm just so used to not doing it. And I be like, I have really had to force myself to like be like that. But Don't force yourself too hard because the opposite of that is uh, overthinking things. Exactly. And then you and just, you're stuck in quicksand every exactly. day just like thinking. So don't be that. Exactly. But... Hey, I don't know. It's nobody going to vouch for me if it's not me, you know? I have to make people believe in me. I have to make people, you know, see the vision. I went through it with family, friends. Like, I'm just, hey, I'm a hot commodity. Here's why. Mm-hmm. People see the vision. Me. Those girls who showed up to the Telfy video. Yes. Um, I think they saw it. I think uh, it gives a lot of women confidence. Me so. too. Me too. Like, seeing the way you move and, like, hearing the way that you maneuver, I think is, like... Uh, it's impressive. Not all of us Thank can you. do that. So, like, Thank I hope you. you you keep on doing it because the music is just incredible on top of it. Like, um, you mentioning that you grew up lo- loving pop music makes sense to me because when I turn on the mixtape, it's not what I expected. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's some things like the Mary J. Bly sample, the Mariah sample that makes sense. But um, tell me a little bit about some of these different sounds that you wanted to tap into and working with different producers to get those sounds. So expensive, which is a little bit more pop leaning. It's not like completely pop, but it is pop leaning. Um, Bankroll got it, produced it, and it was my first time working with them. And I walked into the studio. Okay, well, I was in the studio and I was like, okay, you know, we're working with Bankroll got it, I'm excited. And I'm, accept- I'm expecting black men to come in. So when they come in, it's two white guys and then a, like a black kid. He looked young, though. So I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. I shake the, their hand. <laughs> and then the little black kid they wear, I'm like, hey! And I give him a hug, and I'm, like, excited. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Because I think he's being bro got it. <laughs> so I turn to Joel, and I'm like, are you his lawyer or manager? He goes, no, we're being bro got it. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, nobody gave me the heads up. <laughs> nobody gave me a heads up. I said, excuse me? <laughs> You're a big girl, got it? Two white guys? Two middle age? Like, what? So I, it threw me off. It threw me for a loop, okay? But I was like, all right, we lit then. I said, so who the hell is this guy? <laughs> and it's like this, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, so who is this? <laughs> And it was like, all right, cool. But they thought it was funny. Apparently, they get that a lot. Yeah. I, I understand Wait, why. Wait, is somebody documenting all of this? There has to be footage of all I think there's so. footage of okay, it. Okay, please think. release that when you have a chance. But Yeah, so that's what happened. I'm like, listen, y'all. Today, I want to make nipple music. And everybody looks at me crazy. They said, what, Maya? I said, I want to make nipple music. I want to make a song that's going to make you want to rub your nipples. All right? It got to be like, <sighs> I just got to feel like that. Like, Oh, I'm a girl. And it just has to feel like Paris Hilton in a song. And what you know was the look saying? on their face? And they was like... His faces? Right. Well, everybody except for Joel. Joel was like, hell yeah! <laughs> he was like, let's make nipple music then. <laughs> Fuck it. He was like, yeah, let's, I'm with it. He was like, yeah, I want to rub my nipples too. I'm like, yeah, we got to rub our nipples. And so I sat in the studio for like... We sat there for like two hours just going through beats first. Wow. I said, all right, we're going to have to work from scratch. Like, what happened? Because I like to work from scratch. So they're like, nah, we definitely got something. We definitely got something. So they going through, going through, going through. I'm saying, all right, we're going to work through scratch. they like, let me play one last thing. They play the beef for expensive, but it's not quite yet there. So I'm like, um, okay, I like this, but we got to change everything. That's why I said oh, okay. I co-produced the song. Because I was like, this is like the base of it, but I need you to add a little bit more bop, 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 bop. And a little uh 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 to so make it feel how I wanted to feel. You were know they what I'm sick saying? of you at that point or not? No, yet? they okay. was having a blast. Okay, <laughs> but I think I think I, they were just happy to that to finally have the beat. Yeah, I think that's what it was because I was like, nope, 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 nope. That's not it. Y'all hungry? That's not it. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, can I have some chicken? That's what it, that's what that was like. All right, I was like, let's just take a break. Let's eat. Let's talk. Let's vibe. Let's have a conversation. You know, we we supposed to talk before you make music, so you know, you know. So we finally found the beat. I said, add a little uh uh uh. You know. I don't speak producer yet, but I'm learning. So I was like, please just, I needed to, like, uh, I needed to. And they got it. You know, make my nipples hard. And he was like, all right. 
They was just doing shit like trying to understand what I was saying. But Joel did a really good job interpreting what I was saying and like translating. And I was like, all right, speed it up. And then he speeded up and then he played it. And I was like, all right, this is cool. I'm going to start with the verse because it just feels like a verse because we need a breakdown. And then I was like, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, because I always do that. I was like, ooh, I'm a girl. Like, ooh. And that's how I made it expensive. Hearing about your childhood, um, it was like hard to listen to. But again, mm-hmm. then I feel like I get to know so much more about you. So this is um, Hello, My Name Is, mm-hmm. right? And I think hearing about it, it, it I understand a little, so, so some things like the work ethic. So you talking about growing up and having to raise your siblings, right? Mm-hmm. Being in and out of foster care, having to be a baby, taking care of babies. That's a lot for somebody to go through mm-hmm. at such a young age, like, how did you how did you get through that and then stay strong enough to on the other side be this person sitting right here next to me? Oh, that's quite the question. Um, I think I just did. I think at some point I just recognized that if nobody's gonna be there for me, it's gonna be me. If nobody's gonna be there for my siblings, it's gonna be me. Mm-hmm. And so it was like second nature too, you know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't have to think about it. It wasn't stressful. Like, I just did because that was my responsibility as their big sister. And, like, I was, I love school. It was, like, a safe haven for me. And so I was, like, if I can't do anything, I can do school. I could do the shit out of school. So I was, like, a scholar. Like, my GPA was 4.0 every trip. So I was, like, all right, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to go to college. And I was just, like, college is the way out. That's how you do it. Like, you know, and I, I was so focused on doing so well in school so that, you know, that was just like the blueprint for me. Like, if I do good in school, I could get a good job. And then if I get a good job, I could get a nice house and I could take care of my siblings. Like, like that was like my mindset. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, so that's how I like I just moved. It was like school, siblings, school, siblings, school, siblings. And that's why I never gave myself time to like dream for real. You know, like I never took music seriously. But had I like been given the environment, I probably would have been rapping a lot sooner and a lot longer you're a special person maya i'm glad i'm glad you came today uh the project is really really dope i can't wait to see what you do moving forward so i know this is officially this is a mixtape it's your full first project why a mixtape why did you not want to jump right into an album why is it not an ep there's so many different ways you can approach it yeah i mean it's a mixtape because i feel like that's where i am like right now Mm -hmm. in the stage of my career, I always make a joke and say that I feel like 50 Cent before he got shot. But like, it's it's real. Like I haven't been making music for very long. um, And I feel like I was almost like too mainstream too fast. And I didn't have the legs to stand on. Like as an artist, as a, you know, to be able to walk in a room and be like, yeah, I'm a rapper and only have one song. So like, I felt like a deer learning how to walk. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still learning how to walk, but... The intentions of Hot Commodity in this mixtape is to, like, have a discography, but also so I can rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, before I got to start appealing to the masses and make trying to make the number one records and do it, I want to rap. You know what I'm saying? I, I have a fan. I have a community of people who love to hear me rap and, like, love to hear me get in that bag because that's, that's really what I want to be. I want to be a fucking battle rapper. Like, I just want to, you know what I'm saying? Like... Don DeMarco, like, are you dumb? That's what I want. Like, that's who I am in my heart. That's the roots. That's my roots. So it's a mixtape because I want to rap and I want it to be like, you know, these are good songs, but I'm rapping and I don't have to, like, be too, like, you know, catered to no no type of group. I'm making music that I love that feels like me, that, you know, is, you know, before I have to be, like, too overly intentional. I'm very intentional with the music that I'm making, but before I start have to doing, like, a certain sound or whatever, like, I probably will never do that anyways. But I just wanted to show people, like, yeah, I rap. Yeah. And you can't do this, and your favorite bitch can't do this, and your favorite nigga can't do this, and I'm just rapping, and I'm the fucking Don, and this is why I'm the Don, okay? Spell it out. You bitches is going to have to kiss the ring. Like, that's how I'm, that's what I'm coming with, High Commodity. Mm. Hot yeah. Commodity, there it is. The new mixtape from Maya the Don. Stream that right now yes. on Apple Music. Yes.